What about the taste of the consumer? You mm-hmm. criticize the people that produce the content, mm-hmm. but what about the people that consume it? Mm-hmm. Because it has to be a market and a, a profitability there for me to put my energy into that. Not so, really, like, though. I want to hear. No. The best-selling hip-hop artists in the last seven, eight, nine years have been three things. Three people. Hip-hop. Best-selling. Drake, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole. None of them overtly, especially maybe Drake here and there, Lover Boy music. Mm-hmm. But overtly, they're not like, yo, you got to whoop de whoop But the question I would ask is... What is their fan base and who's consuming their music? Mm-hmm. I, is it more I, a white person vibe or is it the black community? Whoever's buying it, the vast majority of the sales, even though they're not getting tremendous pushes like Sexy Red would be, and not to attack her, she's doing whatever she's doing. She's mm-hmm. a sister, right? But even with all of that, Cole show up, Jay Kendrick show up like when they got an album and they go away. They're still outperforming in the sales than all of the debauchery. I am of the belief that those other people are getting pushed. It's not because if if it was the if it was the thirst of the consumer, they would be having equal sales. They're not. They're not. I think that there's a obviously a propaganda machine going. This is who you actually like. Mm-hmm. This like these people can't rap. J- Drake, <laughs> Jay, they can rap. Cole, Kendrick can rap. These other people, they are in alignment with an investment move. But I got other investments going on. You just one of them put them out there. You know what I'm saying? I I, I contend that it's not the the taste of the people. I think if I get on a camera and make it look like it's a million people and it's really seven. And then I make it look that way. Then it's like, oh, and then it just appears that way. The sales do not reflect it. The City Girls album. You don't even know the name of it. <laughs> no, never heard. <laughs> right? Yeah. They might have that one single, but they not hitting the numbers. So I, I believe that it's like, yo, put this thing in your face so we can get secure bags and investments over here. But the consumer generally, they're telling you the number one selling albums have nothing to do with that. See, and to his point, the propaganda machine literally is pushing to destroy the family dynamic. Mm-hmm. They're investing a lot of money and a lot of time in it. The reality is, as you said, no, the numbers don't reflect it. The talent doesn't reflect it because the people's taste buds are now starting to taste what this crap really is. <laughs> See, when you force feed somebody something, eventually they start to throw up yeah. because it's like, whoa, 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 Ugh. whoa. Yeah, I, I can now I can taste it. Right now, Sexy Red, it's it's obvious that she was pushed along with a lot of other people. Yeah, we love our people. Many of them are very ignorant to the fact that they're being used. Mm. They think that, oh, man, this money coming in, these contracts coming in, these new gigs is coming in. They must like it. No, the reality is you are being used for an agenda. The consumer is being told what to consume. The people are easily led in the wrong direction, hard to lead into the right direction. They don't even know what they like half the time. But if they get bombarded with the propaganda over and over again, like this, like this, like this, like this, <laughs> eventually they're going to like it. What did Joseph Goebbels say? I believe he was the chief propagandist under Adolf Hitler. Mm. He said, if you tell a lie big enough, long enough, the people will come to believe it. And the same thing happens when it comes to music. Same thing happens when it comes to fashion. You put a big paper bag over your whole body and say, this is new fashion, it's thousand dollars. People are going to say, well, damn, I'm going to pay a thousand dollars because that's fashion. No, it's a big paper bag. Right. He must be crazy if you're going to wear that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So we have to make it to where the people, which they are doing now, and if you read the comments under the majority of these posts, yep. when it comes to a lot of these artists, they like garbage, hot garbage. Why are they pushing this person? What's going on? What's going on? That's why I have a lot of these new artists who aren't, they're not even able to make it to three years right. because they never had the real motive and they were also given false hope and this false sense of I'm actually doing something real good. I got some substance when they don't. They were purposely put there. They were purposely manipulated to believe that the negative they're pushing out is what the people want. That's why a lot of them are quitting from Saweetie all the way down. A lot of them, their album sales are terrible. And they're also trying to keep them afloat by having them go and visit the White House right. or go to certain schools. Right. And the people are like, that's not a black representative. That may be a black artist, maybe, but that's not somebody who represents us. So again, um, we love our people, regardless of the artists and all that. But we have to always remember the fact that when this system is trying to control a people, they use the artists and the leaders to do it. Right. And they manipulate the people to believe that that's who you should follow. Right. That's how this is going right now. Right. Um, <clears throat> I'm speak from the, the arena of children. Um, I will say, like I will say and I'll speak for my area, I guess. Um, and most of the children I come into contact with, they hate our artists. Drake, J. Cole, people we listen to, they hate their guts. They're like, oh, that's trash or whatever like that. 
who they love to is the people that we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Sexy Red, NBA Young Boy, they can't get enough of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, or even some other underground artists. Like I'll just I follow my students on social media on purpose just to see what they're doing and listening to or whatever. And the stuff I'm hearing, like these are unknown artists. They're finding underground artists that are talking about just straight debauchery. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. but that's what they like to hear. Mm -hmm. They like NBA Young Boy. None of them live in his lifestyle, but they love the baby mamas and they love the the whole thing the stick of what he talks about. So they try to live like that. Like, what I believe happens is, uh, especially with parents and um, what's just going on right now, we forget. I don't think we understand how much impact mm -hmm. our kids are going to have on our nation in 10 to 15 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. which is why I work with kids so hard. And I'm just like, you know, one of the biggest mistakes I feel like our civil rights leaders made was not training replacements. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's where we messed up at. That's where immediately after the civil rights generation, the 80s, 90s or whatever, because they were responsible for raising the debauchery right now or whatever. But that generation or whatever, grandma's crack, crack epidemic, blah, 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 or whatever, all of that happened because nobody had trained no replacements mm -hmm. in that time. So nobody was in that group like making sure every everything was straight yeah. or whatever. On top of that, um, you know, letting go of shaming. Um, shaming used to be a thing and it needed to be a thing. Yeah. And yeah, so now every, that. Yeah, yeah every, <laughs> now everything is just yeah. except every single thing that happens. Yeah. Don't don't do this to your child. Allow your child is no, my child is not going to make that decision. He's five. Right. He don't he don't understand <laughs> nothing. You know, so <laughs> I'm going to tell you this is what's going to happen. No, you don't have no feelings today. No, this is what's going to happen. Right. He plays baseball. He asked me to play baseball, but he's sleepy for one game. So he's like, I don't want to play. Oh, his mom was like, okay, we can go home. No, we are not. Right. You made a commitment. You are going to play. Hey, if I were to post that on social media, oh, you're trying to force him into blah, 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 blah. Because a lot of people care too much about what folks have to say and they post everything. So when you post in your whole life and everybody's giving you their advice, mm -hmm. you're not living to how you were raised or living to how you think you should. Mm -hmm. or it's like, now you just allow your kids to do whatever. Yeah. Now your kids got social media because all the other kids got social media. And you don't realize, and I tell parents all the time, go check your kid's phone. I do that every podcast I go on. Go check your kid's phone right now. They're meeting up with people you don't know they're meeting up with. Mm -hmm. they're, they're talking to people you don't know they're talking to they're sending nude photos back and forth mm -hmm. they're smoking etc yes your little jimmy that you raised all night who mm -hmm. you let make all the decisions in his life is doing all this crazy stuff and this is all of them like mm -hmm. all of them are doing craziness and a lot of it is being perpetuated from them being allowed to utilize social media what's happening on socials with the algorithms etc is being done on purpose for those kids mm -hmm. those kids are consuming debauchery so that's all they're showing them on socials to the point where now they're just seeing only fans, girls, girls twerking. Like, yeah, I just go yeah. look at their phone. Let me, show, let me look at your Instagram explore page. Your explore page will expose who you are. That's, fine, That's who you are. So when you look at their explore, all you see is girls twerking and blah, blah, blah. Of course, you're going to get into OnlyFans, watching porn, blah, blah. So you, these kids, 11, 12, all they want to do is smoke. They want to post pictures of them smoking. And I'm, te I'm texting them. I'm like, look, bro, if you want to smoke, bro, listen. Handle your business. Stop posting it. Like, yeah. what? Mm -hmm. what is the point? Like, why? <laughs> you only got two followers. Like, who are you trying to look cool for? <laughs> Nobody cares. You're smoking for yourself. Right? You, like, like, you know, so, but this is 14, 15-year-olds. You know, 13-year-olds, mm -hmm. 12-year-olds, 10-year-olds. I've even taken my age groups down in our organization because I felt like I had been wasting five my last five years working with kids that I thought weren't too far gone yet. And kids right now are losing themselves at like eight. Like, and they're gone. When I say gone, I mean they out of here. No, no matter what. You know, so it's like you're trying to, okay, let me let me go back and 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 figure something out. But I'm talking about these 14, 15 year olds, bro, they out of here. You get so now my thing now is okay, let me teach them a couple skill trades. Let me make sure they can go make some money. And then life ends up having to teach them. So, like some of the kids I worked with for the past five years, they they are getting older now, some in college. And they'll call back and be like, man, you know, the stuff you was trying to tell me at the time, it was fantastic, whatever, you know, and now it's it's showing in life, but they got kids now and mm -hmm. they they done messed up. Life had to teach them in that fashion. No matter how much advice I was giving them, no matter how much I was showing them, they had already been tainted. So then I had some little younger kids coming to the org, seven, eight years old. These kids, you know, they ain't been tainted yet. They's making all A's in school. They they want to do their work. They don't care what people have to say. So now I'm character building on top of yeah. those kids who haven't been broken or whatever. So it's easy to, to, to work them up. I said the other day, the only kids that I can name out of my program, it's probably three kids in my program out of the five years that I've been working that can that I can say represent my org. Mm -hmm. Why do they represent my org? Those kids were blessed in by their older brothers. I never allow any kids younger than 11 unless their older brothers were in. 
the only kids who truly represent everything that we taught, character building, et cetera, are those kids who started at seven and eight. My star student started with me. He was like seven years old. Mm. He embodies our program. I'm talking about to the T. He don't even have to come around that much. But because I gave him so much at that time versus his brother, they're completely opposite. However, he's in college and trying to figure things out. But I know for a fact he's going to be an upstanding young man. And he's never wavered. So it's like we keep forgetting about kids like to a point where we don't talk about them as much as I would like for us yeah. to talk about them or even aim at them. Yeah. Because who's aiming at them? The NBA young boys, the sexy, the ones who ain't selling albums like that. The kids are listening to them because we, our group, yeah, I'm going to listen to Drake and Lil Wayne, whatever. They don't care about them. They want NBA young boys said, I'm going to ride around the block and, and blow your head off. And, and I'm going to take your girl and I got 10 baby mamas and blah, 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 blah. They love that. But you, you know, know what? So, I mm -hmm. think they I think they like it because of the repetition. I'm, I'm always mm -hmm. careful to not let the system slip out and get away mm -hmm. from their involvement. Of course, I agree. Of course. Right. So like, OK, let's let's look at the list of people that we talked about. Right. I in the gym listen to drug dealer music mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's murder, death, kill mm -hmm. in the gym. Right, it's one hundred percent same, a little bit same. Again. Right, yeah. it's like it's, you know what I mean in the gym because we have filtration systems. As mm. as to your point of life happening, yeah, we're, we're more mature. Right. We we understand. Yep, yep. I, I'm I'm saying the the they do like it, but I'm saying if you don't have the elders or to them their elders mm -hmm. around to direct and course correct. Mm -hmm. The system is literally doing the same thing that they used to do back in the day with Joe Camel cigarettes. Mm -hmm. They used to put the ads when you walk into the store, the little refrigerator in the store, mm -hmm. that the Camel cartoon ads will be low to that their eye line. Camel. It was at their mm -hmm. eye line. Yes. So there was like, there was psychology. It wasn't mm -hmm. just like, oh, this is the only place we have to put the thing. It was, mm -hmm. we want young people, to King Randall's point, we mm -hmm. want to get these young people on death. Mm -hmm early on and we want to use a cartoon character to do it the system does the same thing in the algorithm why a school teacher would say let's bring sexy red to this school the thought process has already been corrupted because the spell is deep and it works so since the spell is deep and it works and if you're not active in those extremely young people's lives they're going to be gone faster yep. and sooner and the the system skates by looking like it's without a trace. Yeah, it's, it's just the, the children just happen to like set these mm -hmm. these songs. Mm -hmm. Another problem to add on it. Another part is that the room for correction is smaller, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have like you don't have like these ten years mm -hmm. to get your life together like you did previously, no. even economically, because you need more skills. There's less stability in the workforce, right? And things are much more expensive. So I think that's the issue with these kids. I think the previous generation, why they don't see it as such an extreme situation now, because they're basing it on themselves. Like, man, I ain't really graduated college, bro. I'm here mm -hmm. doing whatever. But it's like there were more opportunities for you compared to this generation. You know, mm -hmm. I think you have to be very smart, even hustling. I had a conversation with my boy about hustling, right? Mm -hmm. And like in this modern time, I knew a lot of dudes that weren't the smartest dudes that was getting bread. But I think in this modern time right now, you need to be pretty smart to get bread yeah. illegally. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's yeah. good. Well, I'll say it this way. The biggest thing, of course, psychologically is they're pushing it. Everything is being pushed heavily, heavily, heavily. The children are listening to people who are ignorant themselves. Mm -hmm. These are grown children, right? So these are the people, like you said, who were born from those who didn't teach them the right way, didn't give them the right information. And also when it comes to the artists in particular, I was on Drink Champs with um, Noriega. And I, I mentioned this to him because he said, I don't like these Little niggas. This is what Noriega said. He said, I don't like them. I can't stand them. He said, they, they think they're better than everybody. You know, and all that because now you have teenagers becoming millionaires mm -hmm. off of social media. Right. So now they're like, no, nah, I'm the big homie. Right. You're the little homie. Right? right. So they like, no, I'm making all this money. So, but because money, money, money has been put in their face. But what Noriega told me was, I said to him, you know, the younger generation needs the mentorship of the older generation. Mm -hmm. Even if you think they're not going to listen to you, you have to at least offer it and offer it as often as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. And he said, I, I really want to. And I said, no, you need to. It's a need now. Even though, yeah, you're going to get some pushback because they're ignorant as hell. They got money in their pocket. They think they're famous now because they right. got so many so-called followers and all that. So it's a psychological game right. that the system did by putting you up to bridge or to cut between you and the elders. So now you don't feel like you need the elders because you got a million so-called followers, right? Okay, so I told him, I said, 
you have to do that. And this generation has to continue to mentor those who are younger because this world is moving very fast, mm. so very fast. Right. So, I mean, just 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 at that last point, I mentioned to him uh, something called artist development. And he said they took that out of the record labels. <laughs> where they used to teach the artists about credit. They used to teach them about how to manage their money, how to buy land, you know, different things like that. They remove that. So you don't have artist development. You give this 14, 15 year old a $2 million contract, boom, give them all that money. And they just running, buying up everything, thinking they got it all, having no clue of what life really is about, where things are about to go. So there, it, it is being set up is right. my point, right? And the algorithm is being pushed same way. Like China doesn't push that on their teenagers. Right. China does the opposite. They show everybody being successful. They show martial arts champions. They show people getting degrees. You know, they show all the success of the Chinese. Right. The algorithms out here is flipped to everything that is crazy and insane. So the parents have to be educated. The artists have to be educated, which is something that I do personally when I meet with the children, talk to them. But also I get to the artists. And a lot of them just so happen to follow your brother. So like they happen to follow a lot of us. Even if they don't tell us they do, mm -hmm. they do. And they watch mm -hmm. it. So yep. we have to get to them. That's another thing I'm going to say. As active as we are, we have to be more active in getting to them. They're not impossible to get to. Right. Get to them. Pull up on them and say, listen, brother. Let me tell you this, because sometimes they don't know who the agent is around them. Yep. Mm -hmm. They don't know that their manager is putting some of that stuff in there. They don't know who their handler is. And every single one of these artists have handlers around them. They may not know. Kanye talked about that. And I talked about that dealing with Kanye. What that man had him on drugs. That was Harley Pasternak, who was a Canadian agent right. who had him on drugs. Seriously. So so there's a again, there are layers to this. Get to the artist, educate them. Don't give a damn about what they got to say. Yeah, I'm not here for your album. You ain't right. paying me. Right. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And also because the crap that you putting out there is affecting these children that we're going to have to clean up later on. Right. You mm -hmm. ain't going to be down here handling the garbage. Right. So I got to teach you, point out who your damn handler is, correct them, <laughs> you know, then go teach the children, be with them. So we, we got to be active in all these different areas. Right. It's a real it's a serious situation.